Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Chip Over the Top Rugby Podcast with me, your host, Ryan. I hope you are all well. If you are new here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Today, we are discussing the 2024 Six Nations Welsh squad. It hasn't been announced yet, but it will be over the next week or two. For that, I am sure. Now, without getting into the 2024 squad, we first must look back at the 2023 Six Nations squad because I want you to see the stark difference in not only player caps, experience, but also the superstars that are no longer going to be featured moving forward. So let's dive in. Now, this might appear backwards for you, and if it does, I do apologize. But here is my trusty whiteboard, and I know it already is backwards, so I'm going to do you a solid. Now, I know you can't see me, but trust me, I am here. All right, this is the Wales 2023 Six Nations squad that was picked last year. There were 20 forwards selected, 17 backs. Rhys Carey, Wynne Jones, Gareth Thomas, Dewey Lake, Ken Owens, Bradley Roberts, Leon Brown, Thomas Francis, Dylan Lewis, Adam Beard, Rhys Davis, Dav Jenkins, Alan Wynne Jones, Teddy Williams, Toby Faletau, Jack Morgan, Tommy Rafael, Justin Tipperick, Tipperick, sorry, Chris Chizunza, and Aaron Wainwright. That was the forward team from last year, last Six Nations. Moving down to the backs, there were 17 backs chosen. Kieran Hardy, Reese Webb, Thomas Williams, Dan Bigger, Reese Patchell, Owen Williams, Mason Grady, Joe Hawkins, George North, Nick Tompkins, Kieran Williams, Josh Adams, Alex Cuthbert, Rio Dyer, Lee Halfpenny, Lewis Rezamit, and Liam Williams. Now, moving to the forwards. This is currently the players who aren't available for selection. Ken Owens, likely not going to be picked. Alan Wynne Jones, gone, retired. Not sure about Faletau due to injury. Jack Morgan, Knee injury, surgery, done. Tipperick, retired from international duty. Moving to the backs. Reese Webb, gone, banned. Dan Bigger, retired from Welsh duty. Reese Patchell, gone to New Zealand. Joe Horgans, not eligible due to the cap rule. Lee Harfenny, retired from international. And Liam Williams, not available for selection due to head into Japan. You are left with that group of individuals. That's the backs and that's the forwards. Now, the likelihood of these players being picked Not all of them, but some of them, highly likely. The others, to be determined. And that is what we are going to discuss right now. And so with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, here is the possible Wales 2024 Six Nations squad, the possibility that I think, based on Um, injury concerns, who's playing well, who do I think could maybe get in there. And I have some serious question marks surrounding some players. So I want you to help me uh, in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on who I have question mark, who do you think deserves a spot if I haven't mentioned them. Um, Because I'm curious right we need to consider this as a 
new World Cup cycle, right? So bear that in mind based on some of the player selections and some of the options that I have put down here. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's dive into the Wales 2024 Six Nations squad possibility. If you like this video thus far, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more content coming very, very soon. Okay, so under the assumption that Warren Gatland is going to select a 37-man squad, playing squad for the Six Nations, which is what he did last year, okay, I have done the same sort of breakdown, 20 forwards and 17 backs. So for me personally, right, we obviously know there are some players who are no longer going to be featured, right? And so we also have to look at the World Cup wider playing pool as well. And personally for me, um, there are some players who just haven't been playing well at the regional level. So you may see some names that you probably don't think should be in there. Maybe some names that you do think should be in there. Um, but again, let me know below, please. So starting with the forwards, I think you're nailed on loose head prop who I think has probably been playing exceptionally well at the moment is Corey Domachowski for Cardiff and he has just signed an extended um, contract with Cardiff, Cardiff Rugby. So I think that's something to consider long term. And, and this is kind of where you need to think about it, right? Is that the Six Nations is probably one of the biggest tournaments for Welsh rugby. It happens every year, but we need to build for the next World Cup in 2027 in Australia. So we also need to possibly rule out some players or start slowly sort of filtering them out. And I think Corey Domachowski is putting his hand up to be uh, the starting loose head for Wales. Obviously, Gareth Thomas was favoured for a while. That is why he's still in there. And then... And then we have some question marks. Who do you pick? Do you go with someone like Kemsley Matthias, who has been playing, um, who was in the wider squad for, for Wales during the World Cup? Um, do you go with someone like Rhys Carey, who was in the wider squad, dropped out, um, but has been playing well for Cardiff lately? Question mark. I think it's a lot easier for the hooker selection. I think Dewey Lake has been playing very well. Uh, and then obviously we have the two stalwarts in Ryan Elias and Elliot D. Or do you maybe look at how well Cardiff have been doing? Um, and Liam Belcher, he's a crowd favourite as well. He's come through the roots. He comes through the academy. Um, he is the Cardiff captain. And he's been playing decent. Or do you maybe go someone like Bradley Roberts for the Dragons? who has been involved in the Welsh setup before. Next up, for the loose head, uh, sorry, for the tight head props, we know that the three tight head props who have been selected at the World Cup have now all are playing their rugby outside of Wales. And we kind of have to take that into consideration, I think. Thomas Francis is playing D2 uh, in France, Division 2. Dylan Lewis, he's not in, the UK, in Wales anymore. And... Uh, Henry Thomas is also in France. So, Kieran Azarati played very well on the weekend for Cardiff, scored a beautiful little try and showed his burst of speed as well, ladies and gentlemen. So I think we see him. I think we have to bring Thomas Francis in as sort of a, a solid off-the-bench backup. But it's also good to have the experience in the squad who can, you know, other players can learn from. And then here is where we get interesting. Do we bring someone like Dylan Lewis? Bear in mind, both Francis and Dylan Lewis at the next World Cup are going to be in their early 30s, right? Or do we bring in someone like Leon Brown, who has sort of been tipped for the Welsh team before, just hasn't been able to cut it, injuries and fitness and whatnot? Or Sam Wainwright, who um, has been playing well for the Scarlets when he's featured. Moving on, second row is obviously a little bit more uh, set in stone, I think, as well. Adam Beard, Will Rowlands, Dav Jenkins, and then 
Teddy Williams? Or do we see someone like Rhys Davis come in as well, who has been playing back row cover option for the Ospreys in the absence, as you can see, of Jack Morgan, who is unfortunately, probably, unless there's a miracle, set to miss the Six Nations, which is a massive blow for Wales. He's been an outstanding captain, but also an outstanding blindside flanker as well. And open side. Um, speaking of back row, I think there are nailed on starters, right? Tommy Raphael, Aaron Rainwright, <coughs> excuse me, and then uh, Tane Basham, Tunza for uh, optional cover as well. I don't think you can ignore Morgan Morris anymore for the Ospreys. Just outstanding. And he is surrounded by talented individuals. He plays with Jack Morgan all the time. He plays with Adam Beard, Dewey Lake, etc. He is surrounded by talent. And it is just proving that he is uh, worthy, I think, of getting called up. And then we have some question marks, right? So we have, at this point, one, two, three, four, five back rows. How many do we want to take? Is Falatau going to be fit? He hasn't played a game for Cardiff yet, right? And we know, just like with his injury prior to the World Cup, that he needs game time to grow and become a better player. We need him firing on all cylinders from the get-go in the Six Nations because the first game is against Scotland. Do we take a gamble on a younger player like Morgan Morse, who is outstanding, ladies and gentlemen? Is he ready for that next step? Will Warren Gatland select him? Time will tell. And then we can look at Cardiff. <clears throat> Mackenzie Martin, Alex Mann, <coughs> both of them. All playing well regionally, but are they able to make that jump to the international standard? We don't know unless they actually get brought into the squad, right? There's only one way that these players, any player, is going to get leveled up. Now, obviously, um, they, you know, they can have the natural talent and the skill set prior to all this. But unless you're brought into the fold, there's no true way of telling to see if they can level up, right? And I think if you bring any of these players involved here, Morgan Morse, Mackenzie Martin, Alex Mann, um, the likelihood of them stepping up is seriously high. To get them to the next level they're all playing well regionally so why not right there's we there's probably room for an extra back row player to be honest but again will he go with someone like reese davis who can cover the back row time will tell all right once again let me know your thoughts on that that are the forwards that i've selected 20 of them but obviously some question marks need to be filled in as well. For example, at loose head, um, tight head. It's, it's Warren Gatlin's going to have his, uh, have a tough decision, I think. All right, moving on to the backs. Now, the backs are a little bit more challenging, right? Because if you look at the previous uh, whiteboard, there are a lot of backs missing. No Dan Bigger. No Lee Halfpenny, no Liam Williams. Some key players. No Reese Webb. So, I've had a, a difficult time here with the backs. Um, not, not for every position, but for some. Let's start with scrum half, shall we? Thomas Williams, in my opinion, is the nailed on number nine for Wales. I would be absolutely surprised if Gareth Davis or if someone else starts ahead of Thomas Williams. Thomas Williams has been playing incredible at regional level. My option here is to go with a youngster, but I'm not entirely sure who. So let me know your thoughts below. Who do you think goes here? Do you bring in someone like Archer Hughes? Is it too early for him? To bring in uh, Ruben Williams from the Ospreys. Who knows? <sighs> the number 10 jersey. The absolute um, 
pinnacle to Welsh rugby is wearing the number 10 jersey. I know he didn't have the best of games on the weekend, but bear in mind it was his first game back and the conditions were absolutely shocking. But given the situation, given his World Cup playing um, and how he played in the World Cup, given the fact that he was next in line after Dan Bigger, I think if Sam Costello can stay fit and healthy over the next couple of weeks, he is the starting 10. With that in mind, who backs him up? Who backs him up? Personally, the best number 10 outside of Sam Costello has been Callum Sheedy this season. He's been outstanding for the Bristol Bears. So has Jared Evans, might I add. Obviously, he doesn't play for the Bears, but who is your third choice? Do you even need a third choice, given the fact that I have also gone with uh, Kai Evans and Ben Thomas? Uh, yeah, Ben Thomas, question marks. But, or do you go with Owen Williams? Do you bring in Johan Lloyd, who possibly, possibly is a more versatile option than Kai Evans? These, these are question marks, right? These are things that we need to discuss, right? Do you do that? Center partnership, George North, Nick Tompkins nailed on without a shadow of a doubt. But are these going to be there in the next World Cup cycle? We know George North is heading off to France, right? And the reason why we have to sort of take that into consideration when we make these selections is that when the players aren't playing in Wales, they have to, during the, the bye weeks, the Farrell weeks, right, they have to go back to those clubs and possibly play. So that needs to be taken into consideration. George North is, is going to go over to France. Um, and obviously Tompkins uh, is in England at Saris, Saracens. So uh, who's next? Johnny Williams. He's the only one for me that I can say without a shadow of a doubt is sure-fired in, right? So you have those three. But then who's next? Ben Thomas for Cardiff has been playing exceptionally well. And we know he can play 10 if needs be. Someone who I think has been outstanding as well is Eddie James for Scarlets. He's young, but he's phenomenal. Joe Roberts for the Scarlets, also playing very well. He was in the wider squad as well, don't forget. Or do we bring in someone like Kieran Williams as well? These, these are the things that we are going to find out very soon. And I'm just speculating. I'm, I'm, I'm opening up the discussion here because I personally don't know. That is why I've put question marks there. Okay, back row, uh, sorry, back row, back three. Before I get into this, there was a lot of talk about Emmanuel Faye Wabosi, right? Is he going to play for Wales? Is he going to play for England? We have just found out that he is more than likely not going to be playing for Wales. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be playing for England, right? Borthwick has a weird a weird thing about picking players who aren't the best at their current time. He just, he, just look at the World Cup squad. He delayed it so long before he started picking the players who prior to have been on form. So will he even be picking Emmanuel Feiwabosi for his squad uh, and his wider squad? Who knows, right? Who knows? But that's besides the point. I personally think Rio Dyer is a better winger, more well-rounded. Plus, he has the international experience. Lewis Rees Zammett, Mason Grady. I've got Mason Grady in on the wing instead of the centres. Obviously, he can play centre if we need him to, right? But he has been playing exceptionally well on the wing for Cardiff, and that was his uh, preferred position. And he's been showing it 
He's been scoring tries left, right and centre and he's just going to draw so much attention on the wing. Um, Josh Adams, not entirely sure if he's going to be 100% available. So that is why he's not here. But he could probably go down with Owen Lane and Keelan Giles in the question mark, right? Um, one of the positions that we are definitely going to need to fill and fill quick is fullback. And there is one player for Cardiff who is young. But when I watched him play against the Stormers, he has been a rock. He was a rock at the back. He reminds me of, of a young Lee Halfpenny. Everywhere. Puts his body on the line. Fantastic player. Can win it. I think one to watch. And I definitely think he deserves to be called up for the Six Nations squad. And then I've gone with Kai Evans. Uh, obviously involved in the uh, wider World Cup squad. Um, and uh, can obviously play number 10 as well if needs be. And again, question marks. Owen Lane playing very well for Cardiff. Keelan Giles playing very well for um, the Ospreys. Both scoring tries. Both very good finishers of the ball. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the possible Wales 2024 Six Nations squad that I, the Welsh guy in America, the Chip Over the Top Rugby Podcast, has selected. So, what I want you to do is have a look at that. Let me know if there's anybody who I've missed. Let me know if there's anybody who you think deserves to be involved in any of these question marks. Or do you think some of the players who I've set as sort of first, second choice options deserve to be in there? Or do you think there is someone better? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you hit subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited for the Six Nations. Very, very excited. I'm very excited for this announcement too. Like I said, Warren Gatlin's got his, uh, his job cut out for him, Ria, in this selection option. But I guess we will find out very, very soon thank you very much for watching i appreciate you all i'll catch you very very soon